Lesson 3. Fundamental Concept of Occlusion Centric Relation Centric relation is a dual relationship which describes a conceptual relationship between maxilla and mandible. It is not an occlusion. This position is independent of tooth contact and is reproducible. It is also restricted to a purely rotary movement about the transverse horizontal axis. Centric relation has been described in three different ways anatomical, conceptual, and geometrical. Anatomically, centric relation can be described as the position of the mandible to the maxilla with the intra-articular disc in place, when the head of condyl is against the most superior part of the distal facing incline of the glenoid fossa. It can be paraphrased as uppermost and foremost. However, this is a subject to debate as some prefer the idea that centric relation occurs in an uppermost and midmost position within the glenoid fossae whereas very few now support the idea that it is in an uppermost and rearmost position. Conceptually, it is the position of the mandible to the maxilla, with the articular disc in place when the muscle which supports the mandible are at their most relaxed and less strained position. This is pertinent to the understanding of ideal occlusion where there is a qualitative relationship between a jaw position and another element of the articulatory system. In the geometrical way, it is the position of the mandible relative to the maxilla with the intra-articular disc in place when the head of condyle in the terminal hinge axis. Now let's learn about the history of centric relation. In his monograph, Purcell stated that it is practically impossible to retrude mandible further than the apex of arrow point tracing. He also stated the mandible's most retruded opening and closing movements can be performed passively and also actively after light exercise. According to him, it was impossible to ascertain whether a strained centric relation actually existed. Centric relation can be registered without strain and is highly reproducible. However, patient must be without history of TMJ pain, muscle spasm or other disturbances which could influence the mandible movements. There is no evidence to support the view that a difference exists between a strained and unstrained centric relation. Therefore, the most retruded position of the mandible is not necessarily a strained position and may be considered a reference point for occlusal restoration and other forms of occlusal therapy. Lauritsen uses his nomenclature and avoids using centric relation because centric implies in the center. He described the position as terminal hinge relation and defined as a range of retruded mandibular opening and closing movements while the transverse hinge axis remains stable to both the mandible and the skull. He also reported about terminal hinge entire occlusal position when the maximum intercuspation occurs with the mandible in its rearmost position. Cleanser suggested centric relation as the most anterior superior physiological position of the condyles against the slope of the eminentia permitted by the limiting structures of the temporomandibular joint at a given degree of vertical dimension. This was approved by the Glossary Committee of the American Equilibration Society. It is a position that is commonly coincident with maximum intercuspation. It is also an acceptable reference position for treatment. Meanwhile, Dawson emphasized the superior aspect of condyle placement in suggesting that centric relation can be better defined as the most superior position the mandibular condyle can assume in the glenoid fossae. Farrer and McCarthy defined centric relation as the most superior position of the condyles at which a hinge movement can be recorded, provided the discs are not displaced. 
Crawford suggested the definition of centric relation as a bilateral orthopedic position and is the most superior position of the condyles in the glenoid fossae as they relate to the posterior inclines of the eminentiae with the articular disc interposed at which a hinge axis movement can be recorded. In 1984, Silenza proposed to substitute condyle disc assembly for condyle. The significance of centric relation is that there is a reproducible position of the mandible relative to the maxilla. This position is reproducible and not guided by the occlusal surfaces of the teeth at all. Thus, all atentulous patients still have a centric relation. However, there is inter- and intraoperator reliability in centric relation. There are three methods to manipulate the jaw in locating centric relation position. By manual manipulation, chin point guidance and three finger chin point guidance. Chin point guidance positioned condyle in the most posterior and superior position while by manual manipulation allows the muscle to guide the condyles into a physiologic antra superiorly braced position on the articular braced position on the articular disc along the articular eminence. Let's okay. slide in into the maximum box. Stop. We will now watch a video on how centric relation in determined clinically in patient. Yucha designed an anterior positioning jig and was the first to employ an anterior stop. Later it was modified to permit upward condyle movement without the distalizing effect. The arrowhead traced represents centric relation. The starting point of patients protrusive in both lateral excursions is the arrowhead and represents centric relation. The possibility obtaining this tracing indicates a reproducible jaw relationship. It serves as anterior stop to vertical closure with the condyles in optimum position. It also holds the occlusal vertical dimension. The absence of deflecting inclined tooth contact allows muscle function to be reprogrammed to eliminate the adaptive act of closure. To record centric relation, trim an extra hard base plate wax into an arch form. Soften it in warm water and placed against the maxillary arch with the anterior teeth are approximately 6 mm inside the periphery of the wax. Carefully apply finger pressure around the periphery so that indentations of all maxillary gusp tips will be registered in the wax. Then, guide the mandible into CR. Lucia jig can be incorporated into the interoclusal record to deprogram the muscles. It will covers the upper central incisor and is shaped to contact with the lower teeth in CR with posterior separation of 2 mm. Once cooled, the record can be removed and inspected. The record can also be further improved by placing zinc oxide eugene oil paste or temporary cement as a reline on the occlusal surface. These capture more details of the occlusal morphology. FACEPO records the relationship between the patient's terminal hinge axis and the maxillary teeth, enabling these to be transferred to the articulator. Casts are articulated in centric relation and then brought together to examine the occlusal contacts and verified clinically. The maxillary cast is seated on the indentation of facepo fork after the facepo is attached to the articulator. For the mandibular cast mounting. Ensure the incisal pin should be lowered sufficiently to compensate for the thickness of the centric relation record.
maximum intercuspal position is defined as the occlusal position in which the greatest number of contact occurs between the upper and lower teeth.